Hello, everyone, and welcome to another series of Everyday Heroes of Effective Giving, produced by Intentional Insights. I'm Dr. Gleb Sapursky, the president of Intentional Insights and the producer of this series, which showcases the stories of everyday heroes of effective giving and describes their story of why they engaged with effective giving, why they care about it, what they're doing around it, and what they plan to do in the future. So today we're going to be speaking to Catherine, a science educator in New Zealand, and who will introduce herself to us and share the answer to the first question, what what makes her so passionate about effective giving and how she defines effective giving in the first place? Over to you, Catherine. Thanks very much, Gleb. So, um, yeah, my name's Catherine. I, um, I guess effective giving is, I guess, giving your time or your money or uh, um, your expertise to do something that actually improves the world in some way. I guess I, I, it doesn't really need to help people. It could help animals. It could help the environment. Some other, some sort of way of improving the world as far as you consider what would make the world a better place. So I guess I'm quite passionate about effective giving because I just see that there's this massive opportunity for people to improve the world. And I think there's a lot of people out there that think, first of all, they think that the world is terrible and it's getting worse. And in so many ways, it's actually getting better. And also a lot of people feel that they're powerless to do, to do much good and to solve these problems. And actually, I feel that most people that I talk to, so, you know, people in developed countries, um, they've got a huge amount of ability to make the world a better place. So um, I think, yeah, that's why I'm passionate about it. It's, yeah, you can do a lot of awesome stuff. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Catherine. And I really think you can do a lot of awesome stuff. And a lot of people in developed countries don't quite realize how much capacity they have to improve the lives of people around the world, animals around the world, and like you said, the environment and other causes to just advance global flourishing. Mm -hmm. Cool. So let me get to the second question of what is your story of getting involved in effective giving? Well, um, um, as Gleb said at the start, I'm a science teacher. So I've been quite interested or slowly getting more and more interested in you know what it means to do science education and why should I be doing this and so it kind of led me to learning about sort of skepticism and pseudoscience and how could I um, prevent my students from falling into these these traps of you know believing in anti-vaccine dogma and um, you know, other kind of issues. So through that, I kind of got into the skepticism um, field and learned a bit. And I also stumbled across um, some rationality um, materials. So one of the things that I did start listening to was the Rationally Speaking podcast, which um, it was a New York, it's a New York City skeptics um, production, which is how I kind of learned about it through that kind of skeptic side, but it's a lot more about rationality um, so much than sort of debunking pseudoscience or anything. Um, but they had a episode where Julia and Massimo, the hosts, interviewed Peter Singer. And um, and Peter Singer talked about his, his book and uh, I think it was The Most Good You Can Do and also discussed, um, you know, things like the drowning child problem and a few other philosophical things. And I kind of thought, oh, yeah, what Peter Singer said, yeah, it kind of made sense. But what I guess was I found most impressive was at the start, Massimo, the host, he kind of went into how he, how Peter Singer's writing had changed his life. And I, I kind of realized at that point is that you can read a book or you can read an article or you can watch a movie and have it change you and – that's okay. It's not just a case of, you know, oh, that's an interesting article. You can actually say, actually, I'm going to act upon those thinking and I'm going to make the world a better place. So I was quite inspired both by what 
singer said and what Massimo did. So I thought, right, I'm going to learn some more stuff about this and, and see whether it's going to change my life too, which it did. Cool. Yeah. It, and uh, that's a really nice show, Rationally Speaking. It's produced by uh, Julia Galev and uh, Massimo, as you mentioned. And uh, I'm glad it had such an impact on you. And, uh, mm. Peter Singer's writings are really great. He has a great TED uh, talk as well on uh, effective altruism. Cool. So I'm curious to learn more, and I'm sure the view my viewers are too, on what you're doing right now to enact into life your passion around effective giving. Well, uh... About a year ago, I uh, kind of tried to get in contact with some other people in my town. I'm from Christchurch, and it turns out that there are a couple other people who are interested in effective altruism. So we've now started a group. So we've got a, a meetup group and a Facebook group, and we get together, uh, I guess, about once a month, maybe a bit less often than that, and um, you yeah, run sort of films and discussions and potluck dinners and things like that. So that's one thing. And there's been a few people who have been exposed to effective altruism by sort of finding us on the meetup page. Um, and I've sort of, yeah, gotten a bit involved in that and changed, you know, what they do as far as giving. Um, so that's been really neat. Um, but the main thing I've been working on is um, the Students for High Impact Charity, which is called Chic. So in my school, I, um, I've done a few kind of giving games and talked to little student, small student groups. Um, but a few of my students said, oh, you know, would you, would you teach a course on this, all of this stuff? So at the moment, I'm teaching two courses, um, essentially on effective altruism, but um, using, um, working with the group, called the Students for High Impact Charity. And basically it's a bunch of people around the world who uh, just at the start really, we're writing resources and lessons and um, so that interested people, it could be teachers, it could be students, it could be um, just members of the effective altruism community can sort of run these um these kind of sessions with anybody who's interested at, at a high school level. So kind of accessible, um, sort of entertaining way of introducing effective altruism. So I've been running that. Um, I think I'm up to sort of had five, five lessons. So, or yeah, so really um, just starting it, but um, it's been a huge amount of fun and uh, really quite encouraging what the students, how the students have been sort of thinking about it. Yeah, some of them really frustrates them, and but I think that's really cool. You know, they're actually, I don't know, thinking about their impact on the world and engaging with philosophical issues. And um, yeah, it's been really fun so far. Cool, and it's a, it's a joy to see someone who has fun doing effective altruism. <laughs> Yeah. That's what all uh, of us try to do, kind of have joy doing the things we love. And that uh, leads me to the last question of how do you imagine yourself doing effective giving in the future? And what kind of mark do you love, want to leave on the future, on the world, uh, with joy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I mean, when I first got like interested in effective altruism, I didn't really know what side what path to take, whether I should just earn, try and earn squillions of dollars and give it away or, or even what cause to look at. Like I'm still debating about what cause I should work on, but actually I've kind of come to the realization that that's actually fine, that I don't really, I'm just not settled on a cause. And in fact, that might be a good thing. So I think what I want to do is try to get young people, well, actually anybody, it doesn't matter if they're young people or not young people because I've tried to talk to adult groups as well as my student groups as well, but just try to get as many people as I can to rethink their impact on the world and maybe rethink um, just, how, yeah, how they how they can do good in this world and realize that they have the power to, to do good. And I don't really care whether my students sort of come out of this and some of them say, oh, I want to be environmentalist or 
I only care about humans and I don't care about animals or vice versa. It, it doesn't matter as long as they're, they're thinking critically and they're actually you know, doing their best to make the world a better place. So that's what I'm hoping for is that there will just be a bunch of people, um, either people that I've personally taught or people that have responded to the materials that I've been writing as part of the Students for High Impact Charity group. So I'm hoping that there'll just be lots more people of the, the young generation coming through. Um, just seeing their lives is not about them so much, but is about the world. Yeah, that's wonderful. And kind of this idea of you leaving a mark on the world by having the young generation, more members of the young generation envision their lives is about making the world a better place. That's that's a wonderful sentiment. Yeah, well, for she sharing your story. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing your story, Catherine. No, that's great. Thank you. And you're excited about this. And I am too. And thank you. Thank you for yeah. taking the time to do this interview. And that's no problems. <laughs> it's a pleasure. That's, yeah. This has been another episode of Everyday Heroes of Effective Giving, produced by Intentional Insights. I'm Dr. Gleb Saporsky, signing off. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.